All right, so we are live. What's going on, y'all? Good evening, good evening. Yours truly, Dr. Barry. Hopefully, I mean, I think, all right, looks, I don't I don't look too, too bright with the light. So obviously I am at work, actually all nights. So uh, the, the our typical lighting isn't how we want it to be. But we got a good discussion tonight. I'm sorry I actually came on late because when you're on nights, stuff like this kind of happened right so it was much busier than expected we usually get on here at 9 p.m eastern standard time uh but i had to push a little late and i hope y'all forgive me um i am your truly dr barry pierre board certified internist host of many things uh this evening we have our real physician reacts this is our live weekly series where we just talk about stuff that comes across our social media feeds as well as host of Lunch Learn with Dr. Barry. That's my podcast. Comes out every Wednesday. If you're a podcast listener, check that out. As well as the host of Medicine Mondays, which comes out, of course, every Monday. On the YouTube page, link in the bio. If you are not following, make sure you follow. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. We are talking about an anti-vaxxer who unfortunately passed away last week. And this isn't just some regular anti-vaxxer this is one of the more prominent anti-vaxxers in the space and what we typically see is that when anti-vaxxers who are prominent end up passing away from reasons that are private which i'm okay with them being private the conspiracy theories go through the roof and it, just like this creator right here, I don't know if you know uh, Silk and Diamond. Uh, they were uh, with uh, Trump and his campaign when one of them passed away in the hospital for respiratory diseases. They were quick to say it, it was not COVID, but it was something else. We have another person. He, This guy is... How old is he? Give me a second. Let's get his age. Uh, looks like he was 57. So 57 year old male who, oh, it says right here. I didn't even, I wouldn't tell you right there. So 57 year old guy who passes away and pr prior to his death claims that he was poisoned due to his beliefs. Now that's one thing. And typically we don't talk about we don't talk about, you know, our anti-vaxxers. We try not to talk about them. But one thing I will tell you is that they will throw a conspiracy theory out there to prove them being right or to avoid themselves being wrong. Always throws a conspiracy theory. So again, you have this 57-year-old gentleman who just dies. And his conspiracy theory is that he was poison. Poison with what he believes to be covid related ish a vaccine like he thinks it's something in a covid vaccine but uh according to reports 20 times more potent and because they poisoned him that's how he, he ended up dying you know several weeks later right so this is this is what we have to typically deal with right now mind you when i tell you i don't typically keep anti-vaxxers on my radar i really don't like it's like uh, again, I try to avoid them left and right. I try to allow them to live in their truth left and right. You live over there, I'm gonna live over here. But unfortunately, it was brought to my doorsteps, right? My social media doorsteps. Because now, those who don't know, when I typically do this series here, um, I've actually featured Dr. Batar. Uh, one of our real uh, physician react series. Just quick Google Dr. Rashid Bittar, Barry Pierre, it pops up. So quick Google that. And again, when I dropped the video, you know, he he has a little fan base. So of course they were upset. But I noticed last week that for some reason, every single one of my social media platforms started blowing up. Like every single one of them started blowing up yeah my him. every single one of them started blowing up and i'm like what what's going on here and like why are they like why are they still talking about this guy right here so i had to go do my googling and then find out this guy passes away and when i tell you 
some of the comments that they were leaving me, like if I didn't have, you know, if I didn't have like a heart of steel that can deal with the negative comments, I'd I would have really felt bad going into the weekend. You have people um, saying that I was a part of the team who poisoned him. You have people uh, telling me I was a liar. You had people saying that um, uh, the you know the 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 pharma community uh, was a part of it. Like you had so like it was just I mean comments after comments. So of course I go to look on my YouTube page. The YouTube video has like eleven thousand views right now. I I posted it on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn I posted it. It has now seventy three hundred impressions. 42 comments, two po posts, 11 reactions. Uh, Instagram, the Facebook is even worse. And every single one of them was essentially saying that I and uh, the team that I was a part of, team get vaccinated, was a part of his death. Now, what I want to know is how come when the anti-vaxxers die and they die of some weird respiratory disease how come they never say you know what i was wrong about covid i should have respected covid maybe i didn't agree with getting the vaccination but i shouldn't have gone out and told lies that caused other people not to get the vaccine i should have just said hey you know what if it's up to me i'm not getting the vaccine but i can't tell you what to do no they didn't do that they didn't do that they went in and they, they wanted, they, he, especially this guy right here, he screamed from the rooftops everywhere who would listen to him how bad this vaccine was, how this was a government, a worldwide government experiment. Just lies on top of lies to the point where he had to be sanctioned. He had to be kicked off social media platforms, thank God. Um, he was actually named, and I didn't realize this, a part of the disinformation dozen. So there was actually a committee that said, hey, these are the 12 people that are spreading the most, the most egregious lies about this vaccine, and we're going to highlight them. And he was one of them. He was one of them. So, and again, it's, again, I was, like I said, I was shocked again, if I didn't have a, if I didn't have a heart of steel, right, or if I was like new to the social media stuff, like I would, I would have been feeling really bad over the weekend. Like I, I wanna, let me see if I can. I don't know if I can read. I wish I, I wish I could pull up some of my, my, my comments here. In fact, oh, let me let me give me a sec. I can, I can't pull it up, but I'll I'll repeat. I'll, 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 let's, let's repeat some of the. I have a video. This video has six hundred thirty six comments now, um, and what was interesting, half of the comments were like paying him homage, while also slandering me. Right. Um, it says time has proven Dr. Rashid Buttar correct. Rest in peace, brave soul. Dr. Buttar spoke truth. Uh, Dr. Buttar is a hero. So true of all he said. He passed away. Thanks to him. I did not get the vax. Rest in peace. Now, mind you, these are all people who are just saying that like, again. Again, rest in peace to Dr. Buttar. Um, but his and this is what we, when we talk about when we talk about how detrimental misinformation is this is the example we're talking about so we have a person who was an avid anti-vaxxer who made up a conspiracy theory because he was very sick in a hospital that said that people on the vax side poisoned him and be because he because you because you couldn't admit like hey this mysterious disease has gotten me so sick that I'm in the ICU. He couldn't, wouldn't, and would not admit it even when he was near his deathbed. So now you have his followers and his contingent looking for, and, and again, I feel bad, right? Again, for those who may know, I've been doing social media for a while, right? So I'm pretty good, right, at the social media stuff when it comes to SEO. So I'm pretty sure there are people who like heard that this guy died and was just looking to see if there were videos that he's done in the past. Unfortunately, when you go to YouTube, I'm one of the top videos that you see. 
right? So all you see is this physician here talking about how he lied all over social media. And it's a good video. Like, again, if you had a chance, it's, um, how many minutes is this? Give me a second. Uh, We're sending people oh, the moon. I, I'll, tell, I'll tell you how many minutes it is so you can. Uh, it's about 28 minutes. It's a 28 minute video. I did a pretty concise aspect of, you know, why he was lying. Pretty concise. But here we go, right? They didn't want to hear it. So it, again, it's like in the comment section, uh, are, are, is, again, I feel bad, but it's almost comical, right? To the point where what I'm probably going to do is that I'm probably going to you know, make a whole video series, just like we do on TikTok, but I'll do it on YouTube, of just YouTube comments and responding to comments. And, of, you know, hopefully educating those who need it. Because there are reports out here that talked about how he might have been dying from some cardiac related disease, myocarditis, pericarditis. I don't have to tell you you know, which virus that's been pretty prominent in the past three years increases your risk for myocarditis, pericarditis. I don't have to tell you that. You guys can probably guess it, right? I don't have to do that, right? But here you go, right? And when you have a situation where you have to lead with misinformation, right? When you have a situation where it's contingent upon yourself, especially from a financial standpoint, to talk about all of the inaccurate and incorrect things of a vaccine because there's financial gain in it, right? When your deathbed comes around, you have to spread some lies, right? So someone asks, uh, you know, what, what we're talking about. So today we are talking about uh, Dr. Rashid Buttar who was a notorious anti-vaxxer, who was a part of the disinformation dozen, who passed away last week for mysterious reasons. And the mysterious reasons that a lot of his followers want to believe is that he was poisoned. And the reason why they believe he was poisoned is because he told his followers he was poisoned by vax groups. He told his followers he was poisoned by those on the vaccine side and they gave him something 20 times more potent uh, than the vaccine. That's what he, this is what he told his followers. So now, and again, because I don't typically keep up with anti-vaxxers, I have to, the only reason why I know that he even passed away is that I look up and all of my social media platforms are like buzzing. And the reason why they're buzzing is because I did a video on... Dr. Rashid Batar. Look, this was, uh, what date was this? About a year ago. This was about, a, wow. It was about a year, is it? In fact, uh, October, not too much a year, yeah. I streamed it live October 21st, so a little bit more than a year. Um, so October 21st, 2021, he was on CNN. I did, a, I did an actual live stream debunking his lies over, over, and over again. So I, I just did that. And it didn't get as much fanfare then, but I think because he's his recent passing away and because my video says Dr. Rashid Buttar lies on CNN, now everyone, right, is up in arms and letting me know that I am the worst physician and I'm a plant of big pharma, right? Like, so that's that's kind of how we got here, right? And again, I, and, I, and, that's, and that's usually my tie-in when I talk about just how dangerous and detrimental those who spread disinformation is, right? And and we've talked about this before, this aspect of disinformation and misinformation. Like, let's say you go, let's say you go read something. You go read, you know what, one plus one equals three. Like you read it and you generally believe that one plus one equals three because you, know, you don't know any better. And you tell someone, hey, you know, one plus one equals three. Like that's misinformation. Like that's, no, that's not really correct. One plus one equals two. But let's say you go read and you read this book that says one plus one equals three and you know for a fact one plus one equals three. But you're going to go out and start telling everyone you can, hey, you know, one plus one equals three. 
one plus one and you want because you want people to believe that one plus one equals three even though this is information that you know you know is false you know it's false but you tell people anyways so that's the that's the disinformation that's when you have intention to spread false and inaccurate information for some type of gain and this guy right here dr shubatar was a master at it and he mastered it especially during a time where we didn't know a lot about the diseases we didn't know we just had this novel disease come out of nowhere and cause a worldwide pandemic and here you have someone going on social media uh, platforms just spreading lies on top of lies uh, but letting you know hey Instead of getting this vaccine, I have this supplement for you. Instead of getting this vaccine, I have this concoction here for you that you can just pay me for. And I know it's big business. You don't have to tell me. I know it's big business for me to sit up here and say, oh, uh, you know, don't trust the vaccine. Don't trust this. Guess what? I have a supplement and you don't have to worry about it. I know for a fact, there's a because a lot of people made a lot of money for it. Shout out to... Um, what are those freedom fighter doctors or what American freedom fighters, whatever those that doctor group is that that robbed a lot of people um, as well, because they were selling ivermectin like it was candy. So I know it's very easy to make a lot of money on people when they don't have the correct information. But as a physician in our profession, we're supposed to be right above that. But clearly with this pandemic, we found out that uh, we are not and we were not. So you have this physician again, rest in peace, uh, Dr. Buttar, um, who relied up until the end, up until the end, he relied on lies. He relied on deceit. And he, he was a big driver for people to say, you know what? If he says don't get the vaccine, that's all the confirmation I need. And there are a lot of people who are not here to this day we know they're not here to this day because they listen to people like him. Fortunately, you have a lot of creators like myself and others, um, neighborhood virologists is one I always think about. I have my public health. Uh, a lot of people on here who took the time and continue to take the time to talk about COVID even they even though when you turn on the TV, they're not even talking about COVID no more. I saw someone in the uh, comments say, oh, COVID's not even a thing no more. No one cares about COVID. No, a lot of people still care about COVID. You may not necessarily be following the people who are giving you the updates. Like I, I saw a report today, I didn't get a chance to read it, that China's dealing with another uh, surge that may result in 65 million new cases a week or something in that regards, right? Like I saw that. Um, so a lot of people are still talking about COVID, like COVID has not gone anywhere and our discussion on COVID has not gone anywhere. It just really hasn't, it's just, just because it's not on TV, just because it's not on TV, um, you know, that's the case here, right? So that's really, right. That's really kind of where we're at right now. And like I said, you know, to, you know, Dr. Putar's followers, right. You know, I'm sorry, uh, you, you guys lost a prominent figure, uh, in your, armamentarium uh being anti-vax uh, you know what rest in peace to the guy but there's a lot of people who are not here today because people like him spread the amount of misinformation they needed right the amount of people spread enough misinformation that they needed to sell their product or more importantly to get you off of the position to say hey you know what right, i'm not getting that vaccine i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna ride it out and a lot of people did not make it right here, right? So let's uh, let's 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 go let's go through some comments. I know we had a lot of them. Uh, we typically get whenever we talk about COVID, we get a lot of comments on both sides, right? And again, like I said, I, I have no problem with uh, both sides, so it doesn't matter to me uh, for for that get worth. Yeah. So this is uh, and Potato said no one cares about COVID no more. That's not true. Uh, Newt Nuttier Concrete Cutter says they're proud to be anti-vax, and pr like I like these types of comments. The people who are proud to be anti-vax, like I don't even know what that means. Right. Because like, like, what are you proud in? Are you proud in the fact that the science um, 
it's so good that you're like, I'm going to just like disregard all facts altogether and stand in whatever truth I'm standing in. Because um, being anti-vax typically means you're just distrustful of the system. You don't, you're not really anti-vaccine. You're just distrustful of this medical system um, and you need somewhere else to turn your energy to, right? And because tr trust me, people who are proud to be anti-vax, if they get a heart attack, the same science that said that vaccine is a good vaccine, they're running to the hospital to get treated. If they get uh, pneumonia, they're running to get treated. They get a cold, they're running to get treated. The same science. The same science that says when you take this antibiotic, you're going to feel better. If you break this bone, I do this surgery to fix you, you'll feel better. The same science that goes into that said, hey, this vaccine works. So when you hear people say, oh, I'm proud to be anti-vax. No, no, you're not. You're just distrustful of the system. And, you, and this is kind of your way to rebel and say, yes, yes, proud to be anti-vax. Like, y'all don't even know what that means. Um, how many doctors have died being so-called controversial? Um, I'm not sure, um, but there are, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of anti-vaxxers who have passed away. Pretty sure there's a lot of anti-vaxxers who passed away uh, due to COVID, right? And that we've, we've got plenty of videos of anti-vaxxers wishing, wishing on their deathbed that they could have done something different. And and again, it just is what it is, right? You it was like just like our guy who's uh, our guy or girl who's proud to be anti-vax, right? When once you kind of stay in the position, you got to be okay with it. Like again, I am in the position of I am pro science, I am pro facts. I know the vaccine works because I read the numbers. That everything makes sense in that regards. But like let's say let's let's give let's let's give an anti-vaxer their their dream come true. Let's say. This vaccine was the worst thing known to man. I would have to stand at with the position that I took. I'm okay with standing with that position, right? I'm okay with it. But what happens is the ones who are like anti-vax, they get sick when they were getting COVID and they were running to the hospital to say, give me everything. They weren't staying at home. They weren't staying at home and be like, no, 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 uh-uh. I don't know that. I don't, I don't care about that vaccine. Nah, the second they got sick, they ran to the hospital and said, give me the kitchen sink. So they, it's, it's them who don't sit on the side. Like, I'm comfortable sitting on the side of, hey, I believe the vaccine works. Because why? I believe science. I can read. I can uh, look at the evidence. And then I can just see that, yeah, this vaccine works. Right? And I'm okay with if in 30 years, 50 years, we get three arms and three legs because of the vaccine. I'm okay with that. That's a risk I'm willing to take. And if you're willing to take the risk, to say you're anti-vax or to be anti-truth, anti-science, you just got to sit in that as well too. <laughs> uh, some people say I, he, they believe he's murdered. Again, I don't, there's no evidence. But we do know that you know, prior on his deathbed, he told everyone that he was poisoned. Like, why you do, like, why would you do that? Like, if, imagine, like, I have, like, 30,000 followers, right? Those who know me, I'm very pro-vax, pro-this, right? Like, so imagine on my death, and I said, oh, my God, the anti-vaxxers did something to me, right? Like, why would I weaponize my audience and have them believe something like that? Like, you just don't care, like, and it just kind of shows how much you actually care for your people, right? Like, like, why would I try to, on my deathbed, weaponize uh, my enemy, uh, my followers against my enemy? You say, oh, my God, the anti-vaxxers had to do something. Like, I was good. I was okay. But no, not what these folks do, right? They, on their deathbed, they're telling us, they're telling us, oh, it was them. It was them. And that's why, that's why they're all over my social media. Like I said, if, if you got some time, when you're done watching this live, I want you to just Google Dr. Go to YouTube. Google Dr. Rashid Batar lies on CNN. You'll see my um, you'll see my uh, video on there, or just go to the link in my bio, go to my YouTube page, and just search for Dr. You'll, you'll see my link, and just read the comments. You'll, you'll, again, some of these comments, some of these comments, I I worry, I worry. Like there are people who even though they know he has died, right, are telling me that he was one hundred percent correct. Like think about that. There are people that even though they know he died of some mysterious poison disease, are telling me, oh yeah, he definitely was correct. Some Someone was uh, uh, shocked that my comments um, were still open as if I would close my comments for fear of retribution from anti-vaxxers. No, 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 we don't do that here. Not here. 
I'm not sure if an uh, autopsy was performed. Typically, for those of you I know, typically you do autopsies when there's like a mysterious reason. Like when there's a mysterious reason why someone may have passed away, that's usually what triggers an autopsy. But if you're in a hospital, you're in an ICU, you're getting treated for, you know, some type of pneumonia, you're getting treated for some type of heart disease, uh, some type of infection, uh, whatever. Like if you're getting treated for something that's very obvious, they're not going to do an autopsy. They, they just don't. It's usually the mysterious, like, hold on, why does this person pass away? Like, that's usually in the case. So I fully expect in this case right here, they're not doing an autopsy unless his family uh, wants to ruin it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jen says they almost ruined your weekend. Yeah, they tried to ruin my weekend, Jen. They really tried to ruin my weekend. Again, I was, I was, I guess, again, mind you, I was shocked, right? Because I just, I just started noticing, right? Because I get a lot of mentions and notifications. So it don't shock me that I'm getting mentioned notifications. It was just the fact that the same places kept giving me notifications. I was like, wow, this same post? And, and because it was like a year old, I think that's what threw me off. I was like, I haven't posted this in a while. Like what's what's causing what's causing them to post? And then once I saw, I said, oh, that's why. Um, but yeah, no, no, for sure. Let's see here. Uh, I think Leela's on. Hey, Leela, how you doing? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So someone said, I made recipes. Wasn't his medical license revoked a couple years ago? Oh, yeah, right. Like this is... This is, this is, and again, if, again, this is not even slander. Go search, go research Dr. Rishu Buttar and North Carolina license. And just to see what he was doing to his patients who were diagnosed with cancer. Just go, just like, I won't even, I won't even expound because I already see people in the comments uh, making it seem like I'm purposely trying to slander him on his deathbed. It's not the case here. But I just want you to, again, because y'all, uh, especially if you are not, uh, if you don't follow me, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the follow, make sure you hit the share. And then after you do that, right, I always preach, like, I could be on here, because I saw someone said I was, like, joking and, like, wearing, like, a fake lab coat, whatever. Um, <laughs> I always say, even when I say something on this platform here, you should be like, all right, I hear what Dr. Barry said, but, like, let me write this down. I just want to confirm. I always say trust but verify. Go ahead and verify. So go look at what he was doing that caused them to take his license away in North Carolina. And and there's I mean there's a there's lots of Google stuff for, for this guy right here. Um, there's a reason why he was on the disinformation dozen. The disinformation dozen. I almost wish. I almost wish TikTok because this was a government agency. But I almost wish TikTok had uh, something like that where we could just kind of list our top 12 accounts who spread disinformation up the wazoo right like i almost wish we had that but he was a part of that um contingent right really bad person uh yes go definitely go get your boosters go get your boosters y'all if you can get, if you can get if you have not been able to get vaccinated get vaccinated and not if you're able to get your booster go get boosted obviously because of public health we talked about this uh last week a couple weeks ago public health emergency went away so you may have to come with some money now because remember when the government was when it was a public health emergency the government paid for the vaccines and stuff so you may have to come out the pocket depending on where you go but i still suggest you go get it so, ironically do i do you think i had COVID? see that's see this that's the question i just want to ask the question when you have a 57 year old gentleman who passes away from what he says uh, is inflammation and in heart, myocarditis, and everything else. I'm trying to think of disease processes that can increase your risk for myocarditis, and COVID is one of them. But what I've what I've cleared, what I've seen over and over again, that when our prominent anti-vaxxers, and there's actually a Reddit group that keeps track of anti-vaxxers who die from COVID. I forget what the name of it, but like someone has shared it to me one day. So there's a Reddit group that actually keeps track of that. But like what typically happens when they pass away from COVID, uh, they always make it. They always are super private. They always say um, it wasn't. They say it was, might have been a respiratory disease, but it wasn't COVID. Like they're they're very keen to try not to give COVID the credit at the end. Um, so do I think he had COVID? It's a possibility. Um, yeah, I mean the way he moves, I don't know. But again, if you ask him, he told his followers that 
that he was poisoned by one of us uh, pro-vax folks. <laughs> Do you know what anti-vaxxers bartenders have in common? They don't give shots to babies. That's funny. Um, so you have autopsy report or are you spreading? Oh, so Miss Laura G says, uh, am I, uh, do I have an autopsy report or are you spreading misinformation? So we kind of talked about it. Autopsy typically is done when mysterious deaths happen. So though he wants you to believe that a mysterious death happened, unless his family goes out and wants to pay for their own autopsy, that's, that's not going to trigger an autopsy report. And spreading misinformation, no, 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 I don't, I'm not spreading information. I'm just saying what he said. He said that he was poisoned right by vaxxer groups right he said someone someone somehow was able to poison him with a substance that was 20 like what, what, what did this what did this post say was it 20 times higher I think it was 20 times higher uh than uh the covid vaccine like this again this is just this is his, his thoughts right his thoughts uh not mine so i don't know i i, I can't speak for him i gotta i can only, i can i can only uh repeat what he said uh, someone's asking, did he have COVID nineteen? So someone wants us to Google journalist deaths, Google immunologist deaths. Uh, we are not sure. Uh, let's see here. Oh, so oh, this is a good question. So, so how can you speculate on his condition without knowing any patient history? Oh, he gave it to us, right? That's the beauty. Because what typically happens with those who spread misinformation and disinformation, they can't wait to give us information. Like, that's the beauty for them, right? They can't wait, right, to the word salad, right? Like, they they can't hold it in. Like, it's, it's almost against them to hold in, right, personal private information. So he wanted to know. Right. And again, Dr. Buttar said he admitted to intense care unit of heart issues, iron myocarditis, pericarditis. This is him saying it. This is not me saying it. This is him saying that. Right. But again, because that's what they typically do. Uh, they, they love us to give us as much information uh, a, as possible. Let's right, see here. Someone says they contribute to medical misinformation. They deserve what they have coming. Yeah, you know, you know, it is what it is. Right. It is what it is. <laughs> someone says, do I believe the COVID vaccine is effective? Yeah, almost definitely. Um, and that's the thing now, right? We're in the, y'all, y'all, guys, gals, we're in the year 2023, the year 2023. If you think that there is actually people still having truthful and fruitful discussions on whether the COVID vaccine is effective, eh, I don't know what to tell you. Like it has been proven through and through how effective the vaccines are that we don't even talk about it like that no more. Like if you follow the content creators that I follow, we're not even talking about is the COVID vaccine. That's, that's not even a question that comes up anymore because we've done proved it over and over and over again. Like if you remember, especially in 2020, I'm not sure, but if you remember early 2020, especially when COVID was here and then after um, we got the vaccines that went late 2020, early 21, they were saying that, oh, Oh, everyone who gets this COVID vaccine, you're just going to drop dead. Everyone who gets this COVID vaccine, you're going to have this, you're going to have that, right? And billions of shots later, none of that has shown up yet. Like, none of that has shown up. So, like, when it, when we, when I say what I love about time, time just, time just keeps being on our side. Like, we have not grown the third leg yet. We do not have a second head yet. Like, it just hasn't happened. Like, we're waiting for it to happen. They keep telling us it's going to happen. And they keep trying to find a reason. Like, oh, okay, boom. So every time you have a variant, a variant, a variant, they say, oh, see, I told you the vaccine didn't work. But that just tells us they don't know how vaccines work. That's all that tells us. Right? When I, when I, I tell people all the time, the best example, right, before COVID, before 2020, people like me were saying get the flu shot every year. Now, we weren't saying, hey, get the flu shot because there's no flu variant, but that's really what it was. That's really what it was. We just weren't saying the complete sentence. We weren't saying, hey, get a flu shot again because there's another variant again. Because those on the know already know that these viruses replicate the way they replicate and they cause um, variants the way they cause. So it's a known thing for these vaccines um, to, to these viruses that cause variants, just like bacteria uh, will pick up resistance because they're different formations of it. It's just science. So it don't shock us. It don't surprise us. 
uh, at all when it happens. Um, but you have people who every the, every new cycle when they hear a new variant, every new cycle when they say like, oh, look at all these people who um, got vaccinated before and now they're sick. Now, what do you want to say about that? We say, oh, well, the same thing we've been saying for like two years. So now nah, that definitely um, uh, the case. Uh, let me see here. That they plan a response to COVID down to the social media censorship before COVID. Nah, uh, uh, yeah. See, this is this is just kind of our anti-vax rhetoric. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Okay. Yep. Someone said yeah. His family could definitely ask for the. Da, 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 someone, yeah, his family could definitely ask for autopsy. They should ask for it if, if, if especially if you think it's something mysterious. Uh, get the autopsy. Um, I don't think you're gonna like the answer you're gonna get, but yeah, if you think something uh, is some mysterious thing, uh, I would I would definitely get the autopsy. I would tell my family to do it. Someone said, uh, "Were you paid to support the pharmaceutical companies?" No, right. And this is something where when you're on when you're on the side of truth and facts, uh, but you see the other side kind of prospering a little bit, you kind of get uh, you kind of feel away because I saw. America's frontline doctors sell folks ivermectin and vitamin supplements and all the stuff that did not work, wasn't going to work, never was going to work. And I saw them make a lot of money because they told people, hey, these vaccines are terrible, these bad bubble. They, they gave the most bit of disinformation they can and then turned around and said, hey, but guess what? I have an alternative for you. So imagine I'm on the other side right here, right, with me, with a lot of other content creators. And we're like, no, 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 no. Look at the science. Look at this. This, this is why, this is why uh, you know, the, the, this vaccine works. This is why the virus is doing what they're doing. Imagine, like, we're on this side, but Pfizer's not paying us. Moderna's not paying us. Johnson & Johnson's not paying us. Novartis is not paying us. None of these entities are actually paying us to do it. Right? And that's, what this, and that's really an encapsulation of just medicine in general. Because that's what typically happens. There are people who make money who don't really make it in the best way possible. And there are those who are like, you know what? I'm going to do primary care. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yes, I could make way more money if I was just doing procedures. But I like talking to people. I like educating people. And I know that doesn't pay, but I like doing it anyway. So that's what kind of happened, right? You had those who recognize if I spread disinformation, misinformation, and then I turn around and sell them a supplement, guess what? They'll go buy the supplement. They'll go buy ivermectin by the dozens. They'll go buy my uh, natural vitamin supplements. And again, like, yeah, this is not me lying or anything. I just want you to Google America's frontline doctors and um, uh, see how many articles talk about how they were robbing people. It's not me, right? But no, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, Moderna, and I keep asking, especially if y'all if y'all know someone out of Pfizer, Moderna, I'm Moderna Mafia. But if you know someone, I'll 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 take a Pfizer sponsorship. I don't think that that wouldn't I wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> and someone said uh, we had to make a quota for vaccine. It was push money talks. Yeah, a lot of billions of people, billions of people uh, got that vaccine. Billions. Someone said it's always the deals. See, and this is uh, this is funny. It's funny but not funny. Uh, so someone said it's always the deals and never the MDs. First of all, that's a lie because uh, a lot of those frontline doctors are MDs. Um, but as a DO physician, of course, like when I see Doctor Butar, like because it's, it's when in comparison the numbers wise, it obviously there's more MDs and DOs, right? So typically when I see something happen and I look and see, oh, this person's D, I'm like, ugh. Because what happens is someone will be like, it's always the DOs and never the MDs. Like, that's what they typically do uh, when something like this happens. But yeah, no, no, no. There's, uh, there's a lot of MD crooks out here as well, too. Um, but shout out to my MD uh, colleagues. Uh, we love you guys. But yeah, no, it's a... Uh, it, it, definitely, it definitely hurt me a little bit more that he was a DO. I'm not going to lie. Y'all know me. If y'all follow me, remember, like, share... Uh, hit like, share, hit the button, make sure you hit the follow button. If y'all know me, I got no problem lying to you. I got no problem telling you the truth. Yeah, it definitely hurt me just a little bit more that he happened to be an osteopathic physician um, on the, the disinformation dozen. There, it just hurts a little bit more. Ivermectin works. No, it does not. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Uh, someone said, uh, you're a deal. Wouldn't you want a more holistic approach to medicine? See, so this, I like this question too. I like this question too. One, a couple couple reasons. 
So for those who know, and y'all know I've, I've been on social media for a while, unless you just now seeing this video and just following. What I what I say in one of the swindles, I don't call it, I hate to call it a swindle, but what I love it. It's it's marketing. We do we do marketing well. One of the big marketing tactics that osteopathic physicians deals have been able to wrestle from my allopathic colleagues. Allopathic are my MDs. One of the, the, the biggest marketing swindles we've been able to do is that we have the general public feeling like if you're a DO, you automatically are for the holistic approach. Now, I will say, again, and I'm biased because obviously I only have DO training. I do think we have a much wider view, but it's not much, much wider, but I do think we have uh, the opportunity to have a wider view of how we approach medicine. But not to say that I'm going to give you one medication versus the other, and not to say that my allopathic uh, colleagues don't do the same thing. But I do think that we do have an opportunity, especially because our training uh, in, incorporates osteopathic medicine, which helps, you know, which for you know layman's terms means that I typically will think about the structural uh, responses to disease that I may be able to find in your body. Right. So let's say you're having a heart attack. Structurally speaking, there's there's certain areas on your spine that I should be able to assess and say, oh, you know, there's some issues going on with the heart, right? That's just very layman's term speaking. I don't want y'all to thinking that we're diagnosing heart attacks by doing manipulation or no, we're not doing that. But just structurally speaking, that's kind of the approach. So uh, going back, right? So the holistic approach, no one, no colleague, no allopathic, osteopathic colleague has ever said, hey, guys, you should get more sleep. Hey, guys, you should, you know, take your vitamins, do your multivitamins, get eat a well-balanced diet, exercise more. No one ever says you should not do those things. But the problem is, is that whenever we say, hey, you should get a vaccine, people are quick to act like we never recommend the other thing. People are quick to act like we never recommend, you know, being holistic, not doing the medicine thing. All of, Like I said, if I can avoid it, if I can avoid giving you medication, I'm going to avoid giving the medication. Uh, but you, you guys need to be on the other side when your patient comes in with uh, congestion and runny nose and everything else. And you're trying to tell them, hey, that's a virus. And I don't want to give you antibiotics because antibiotics aren't going to really do nothing. And if you just wait a few days... It, you'll get over it. Like imagine someone. Let's let's paint this scenario because this is what happens. This is real life, y'all. And y'all y'all are here, so let's talk about real life. You let's say you take half the day off to go to the doctor's appointment. You go. You you spend your money on gas. Um, you drive to the appointment. You wait five ten minutes before you go in the back. And you pay your copay. Copay is thirty bucks, whatever. And then the doctor, uh, the the MA sees you. Then the doctor sees you. And then they tell you, oh, hey, that's just a virus. Go sleep on it. You're like, hold on. I wasted a whole day. I had to give you 30 bucks. I had to be seen by an MA. I had to sit into uh, a waiting room. I had to dr put gas in my car because I drove over here. I had to miss a half day of work. Offer you to tell me to sleep on it. No, no, no. Give me some antibiotics. That's just reality. That happens, right? So, no. Like, yes. As a DO, do we want to push a more holistic approach? Uh, sure. Um, but... If the correct approach says get the vaccine, wear your mask, social distance, guess what we're going to uh, push? We're going to push that as well, too. Let me see here. So, oh, someone said, uh, I think it's coward to speak ill. I'm not. That's a, this is a good point. Someone says, I think it's coward to speak ill about the dead. Where you pay to support the pharma? Again, guys, if you guys know the contact information of F Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, Novartis, all of these other, if you know the contact information, just DM me the contact information and I'll take it from there. Uh, but no, we're not speaking about the dead. We're just acknowledging, we're acknowledging his claim that someone on our side, you know, those who, you know, promote the vaccine poison him. That's all we're saying. Like I said, I don't keep up with him. The only reason why I know he passed away is because his followers have been spamming my contacts, uh, my uh, social media profiles for like the past six days. For the past six days, I go on my website, my most visited post is on him. I go on my YouTube page, my most watched video is him. I go on my LinkedIn, I don't even check LinkedIn like that. I go on my LinkedIn page, my most commented post is about him. Like, that's y'all. 
Like, like yeah, that, I, wish, I wish they would leave me alone. <laughs> let's see here. Let's see. Here. Let's see. Let's see before we. I don't see. I don't see too many questions before we uh, get out of here. Someone said COVID is gone. No, no, COVID's here. Like I said, I, I just talked about it. COVID um, in China, right? They're dealing with a variant now um, that they said. I mean, again, let me let me just get the numbers right because China COVID variant is going to be could peak. And again, this is this is all NBC News. China faces new COVID wave that could peak at 65 million cases a week. So no, no, COVID here is live and well. And trust me, those 65 million cases that happen over here will will move over this way here. So the country has once had some of the harshest COVID restrictions, but the response from government and public is relatively muted this time, right? So again, they're 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 bracing it. They expect a whole bunch of more people to get COVID. What they're hoping is that those who get COVID don't get severe illnesses, don't overrun the hospitals, and don't do those things there. Now, again, I don't know what China's numbers are when it comes to uh, percentage vaccination, but hopefully it's a good amount. Because if it's a good amount, then maybe they can kind of blunt the storm. But when you hear China faces a new COVID that could peak at 65 million cases a week, that tells you COVID, COVID is here. And we should know COVID is here. I, I've told people all the time, COVID is not going nowhere. We just have to adjust our... We just have to adjust our mindset uh, about it. Like it's not going to disappear anywhere not from that standpoint. So let me see. I do believe you're in a farmer. <laughs> Someone said, I do believe I'm part of farmer. Again, like I said, I wish. I tried to, like, again, I'm telling you, I wish. I wish I was a part of the farms, like farmer mafia. Like, again, Moderna, if someone on this live uh, has a is a rep for Moderna, please DM me. So I can, I'll put, I'll put the tag. I'll say I'll put Moderna Mafia over every one of my videos. Like like we could we could really do this. <laughs> Let's see here. Yep, so someone said a lot of people, yep, a lot of people are still getting COVID. Um uh yeah, people we got still people pushing ivermectin. I have no clue why. And you know, you know what's so funny about ivermectin before I get up out of here? What's so funny about ivermectin is that even though it's been debunked, it's probably been one of the most debunked medications for a disease that i've seen in a while like most of the time you know if i say if i say uh a tylenol cures a cold right if i say tylenol cures a cold you may have one or two companies try to prove me wrong like all right they do this one study oh all right didn't really work and then another company over here tries to do a study oh nope didn't work but i feel like almost every three to six months i'm seeing a new study essentially confirming that ivermectin will work like i'm um it's just it's just so wild to me that like ivermectin like whoever like in fact you know what you know what hold on for a second makers of ivermectin uh, merck so merck is the makers of ivermectin and they've said and in fact merck in 2021 said this no scientific basis for a potential therapeutic effect against COVID-19. This is the people who make it. So the people who could generate the most profit from you guys using ivermectin is saying, hey guys, that thing don't work for ivermectin. They're saying it, not me. The people who make it, go to, if you go to Merck website right now, say Merck, search Merck and ivermectin. The people who made ivermectin, who get paid off ivermectin is saying, hey, Nah, I don't, there's no studies out here that say it, don't use it. Like, they're telling y'all to use it, but y'all keep using it. So, obviously, they're, they're going to sit back, they're just going to collect checks. They're just going to collect the checks. Like, hey, you know what? We told them don't use it. They keep using it. They keep throwing it in a study every three to six months, you know, hoping that it sticks. And again, especially, like I said, we're about three years out right now. Three years out, and people still want to believe that ivermectin is a better option than vaccines. I don't, I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> I do not know what to tell them. Let's see here. Someone said that uh, we got we got the we got the typical um, ivermectin works. We got the typical um, <laughs> that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so hey, y'all. Yeah. So I have Leela on here, right? First of all, shout out to Leela, um, who has a degree in public health. And there are people. And so this is this is the thing too, right? Before I get off, I keep saying that. But before I get off. 
uh, one thing I recognize, especially with COVID, this COVID pandemic and anti-vaxxers, is that they have no problem talking to experts in their field, literally, like literally experts in the field. And I, I'll give you the scenario. I was on a, I was on Clubhouse because you know, like when we when we educate, we educate everywhere. We educate on Clubhouse here, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. I, I educate everywhere. So I'm sitting on a panel on Clubhouse, and there is a virologist, an immunologist, there's infectious disease specialist. There's uh, critical care medicine, pulmonary medicine, and then there's just like a general crowd. And there are people who are not in any of the fields I just mentioned actually arguing with the experts in their field. Like actually arguing, saying, no, 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 you guys are wrong. You guys are pushing this thing on us. They were actually arguing. And I'm just sitting here thinking, wow. If they have the conscience to be able to argue with people who are the most likely foremost expert that they'll ever meet in that specific field, there's nothing we can do. There is nothing we can do. Like it's it's I knew it was wild. I knew that was I knew it was a wild thing to do um, from that standpoint here. But yeah, like so we have someone who is and she's pu- public health. She's literally public health. She's a public health. And mind you, I'm a public health professional as well as well. I have a master's degree and um, public health, and my emphasis was on program evaluation, right? So like, like so through and through, I love public, I get, I tell people all the time, I let my public health degree makes me a better physician because I'm able to look at it a more holistic, shout out to the DOs, uh, approach. But when, like, so, so imagine arguing with people who are the foremost expert telling them to Google something. Like that's the, that's that's the wild thing. Oh, Fauci! I haven't I haven't, oh, I haven't heard about Fauci. You know, I someone said Fauci created this whole hysteria. A you know a toy at um a Dr. Fauci's uh, name. Um, <laughs> that is too that is too wild. Um, Lila, we no let's Lila, let's uh let's plan it. Uh, let's let's get you on. Let's 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 get you on a live. Let's plan for a live. Let's plan for either a live. Uh, either maybe tomorrow, but let, let's definitely plan for a live. We could, we we could definitely plan for a live. I actually want you to get you on my podcast as well too. Um, so let, let's. I, I'm a I'm a DM you. I'm a DM you. We'll, we'll get you on. Um, yeah. But all right. So that's what it is, right? I I figured Dr. Putar would have some fans, um, or just people who are okay with his ideals here on the TikTok. So I figured, you know what? This week. Um, yes, I know. Congratulations, congratulations about that. Just guy like this as well too. She's amazing. Like again, and y'all arguing with the experts, telling them the Google stuff, which is wild. Um, yeah. So if you did not get a chance, this episode will be on our YouTube page tomorrow morning. It'll be on the podcast tomorrow as well as well too. So it'll it'll be there. Um, so you guys be blessed. Y'all have a great evening. And uh, me and Leo, we're we're gonna we're gonna plan a date to get her on the podcast, get her on a live, uh, get some talking. Hopefully, we can educate some people out here. Talk to you guys later.